Okay, everyone, welcome back. So uh, you should be able to uh, see the final um, results of the exam in a couple of minutes. Uh, once uh, the two participants who are, who are yet to complete it uh, will finish. So in the meantime, let's move on to the last presentation for the day, which is the Academy wrap up. So here, what we plan to discuss is about the DHIS2 academies, and then um, um, how you can follow the tracker development, and also to support uh, you all in implementing your tracker and what are the additional resources which are available that you can make use of. So DHIS2 academies. Now, you must be pretty aware about uh, the DHS2 academies by now because you are, uh, in fact, attending one DHS2 academy. Uh, the DHS2 academies introduce the latest features and the apps and provide an overview of best practices that you can uh, follow in your implementations. The DHS2 academies are generally meant to train the core team staff in the country and not the end users. So, we are in uh, DHS2 academies. We do not uh, expect the end users of your system to join them because like the, uh, the, the concepts that we are uh, training uh, in the DHS2 academies may be too abstract for them and they might find it a bit too overwhelming. So usually you can have your own uh, the in-country academies which are kind of men for the uh, in, end users of your system. But you can have the DHS to, uh, you can have your core team, the country team or, or, or people, the technical team who will be working on the DHS to implementations. They are the people we are targeting uh, to attend uh, to our DHS to academies. In addition, the academies provide an opportunity for countries in the region to network and share their success and challenges with other members of the DHS to community. So even in this academy, uh, we presented you a few uh, innovations that took place uh, related to Tracker, the web apps, uh, uh, the webinar, uh, that was from the region. In addition, like uh, during the academy, you had the chance to interact with your colleagues and to learn um, the challenges they have, especially in the questions. But like uh, now, uh, the, the amount of interaction might change based on the mode of uh, conducting our academies, especially the online ones you get less chance, uh, we, we, we understand that as, as opposed to uh, on-site academies where you will be meeting people in person and you have more time to engage with the participants. Uh, and also like there may be a few other uh, uh, different academies related to Tracker where we have a lot of uh, interactive sessions and discussions, uh, especially the uh, analytic tools and uh, uh, I mean, there are a few others where we, we have more activities uh, within the academy as opposed to uh, the, the ones uh, which are on configuration. So a brief overview of DHIS2 level one academies, which are in the domain uh, of tracker, right? And uh, or, or related to tracker, because we have different flavors within DHIS2 academies, which are serving at uh, like some are meant for tracker, some are for customization, some are for server management, but like these are the ones which are related to tracker. So in level one, we have uh, design for analytics, the analytic tools, the tracker configuration and tracker use. These are the academies uh, under level one category, which are related to the tracker. So uh, a brief overview of each one of them. In tracker configuration academies, we introduce you to, the, to configuring and managing tracker programs. So the topics that we cover in tracker configuration academy includes uh, tracker terminologies, data model, and configuration of tracker programs, and how to configure the tracker dashboard, and how to configure the relationships, managing user roles, user groups, and program access levels, and configuration of uh, program rules, indicators, and notifications. So some of you must have felt that uh, when we were demonstrating, especially the concepts like uh, program indicators, we just showed you how to use the program indicator. But like uh, we, we like I, I took uh, probably two minutes to highlight the anatomy of how this program indicator is configured. But uh, you really didn't get much opportunity to explore more uh, more into that uh, configuration part in this academy. So the next academy that you should be attending if you are more interested about configuring these tracker components is the tracker configuration academy.
And level one analytics tools, uh, this is for the participants who want to learn how to use the analytic tools available within DHIS2. So here, you know, like uh, in this academy, we demonstrated you few of the analytic tools, but uh, mainly pertaining to the tracker domain. But here in the level one analytic tools academy, we are uh, dealing with uh, validation rules, maps, pivot tables, interpretations, charts, and dashboards. So here it is more about how to use the uh, DHS2 analytic tools. And we also discuss about few different use cases and country uh, examples on how they are using different uh, analytic tools which are available in the DHS2 uh, for, for platform. So here we have some interactive, interactive sessions as well to share experience amongst the participants. We also have DHS2 level one academy for design for analytics. Here we focus on the linkages between configuration and design of analytic outputs. So the topics that we cover in this, in this academy include configuration of uh, dimensions and disaggregations for use in data analysis tools, and what are the best practices for this configuration to allow users to more easily generate complex outputs and the configuration of additional analytics apps, including data quality, bottleneck analysis, and scorecard applications. So this academy mainly tries to uh, relate to the configuration side of uh, uh, DHIS2 and the design of analytic output. So it's a kind of a mix of both. So this is again one uh, new DHIS2 uh, academy that we have introduced very recently. You can also join that. And when it comes to level two academies related to Tracker, we have uh, DHIS2 Android Academies, we have DHIS2 Disease Surveillance Academy and Tracker Implementation Management Academy. The DHIS2 Android Academies, we have two academies, in fact, uh, in, in, in one Android, uh, broad Android uh, component. The first track is the DHIS2 Android Implementation. So here it's about from configuration to deployment of your uh, DHS2 Android implementation. And then we have a DHS2 Android Development Academy where we will be focusing on creating apps using the DHS2 Android SDK. So uh, the topics that we discuss in uh, DHS2 Android Implementation Academy uh, include how to le learn, how to collect uh, data with mobile device, for your tracker and event programs, and the user management on Android, modifying metadata to work well in the Android app, including use of colors, icons, and other Android-specific settings, and testing, deploying, and managing the Android app at scale, and Android app development roadmap and uh, future updates. And the Android Development Academy is mainly for the developers who want to develop their own custom Android applications on top of the DHS2 Android SDK. So the advantage of using the, the Android SDK is like you'll be receiving support for more complex tasks which are very specific to DHS2. And the, uh, 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 the pure Android developers can just focus on the development of the application and the user interfaces. So here we learn how to develop your own custom Android application. Uh, while the DHS2 Android SDK will take care of uh, how to communicate with your DHS2 instance and keeping your offline database synced with the server and to facilitating access to the data model. This focus only on your functionality, user flow, and the user interfaces. So that's uh, uh, the scope of the Android Development Academy. And we also have Tracker Implementation Management Academy, which uh, focuses on planning and managing a tracker implementation versus configuration of tracker programs. This uh, academy targets managers who will be responsible for overseeing DHS2 tracker implementation, as well as DHS2 technical leads who needs to understand uh, availability, uh, uh, availability of different tracker features. So this is more about the managerial and implementation part of the DHIS2 tracker. So this is not a very configuration oriented uh, academy, but uh, this is kind of like targeting the managers and technical leads of uh, each of the countries. 
And uh, in this course, uh, we provide an overview of number of different tracker features and outline strategies for managing a tracker implementation. We provide tools to assess your internal readiness for implementing tracker. And we also support development of a long-term tracker implementation plan that can be reviewed on a regular basis. And this academy does not focus on configuration. Uh, so if you are focusing on configuration, please consider the level one tracker configuration academy or schedule an in-country tracker training. We also have the Disease Surveillance Academy, which focuses on the implementation of uh, aggregate and case-based disease surveillance systems. This uh, targets implementation, uh, personal responsible for uh, the uh, configuration and adaptation of these systems in your country. In this course, we discuss the integrated approach of disease surveillance. So there is some epidemiological part uh, which are relate, related to using DHIS2 for surveillance, which is discussed in this academy. And we also review how to modify a standardized disease surveillance package for local use, uh, including adding additional diseases, mapping indicators, and dashboard, etc. Demonstrate the configuration of uh, surveillance-related features, such as validation uh, notifications and predictors. So these are a few DHIS2 advanced concepts that we'll be mainly focusing in this academy. Uh, and we also review standard outputs associated with the uh, surveillance packages. So the DHIS2 Tracker Academy's learning path, this is a kind of a summary. You usually start with level zero, where we have the DHIS2 Aggregate Fundamentals Academy, where we discuss about the capture analysis and customization, and then we, uh, we also have the level uh, zero, we call it very fundamental, DHS to Event Fundamentals Academy. Right? That gives you an idea about uh, some basic concepts about events and tracker. And then we have level one academies for tracker, where we have tracker webinars, which discusses use cases and features. And we have tracker use academy, which you attended the, the, this particular academy. And from that, you have to go uh, to Tracker Configuration Academy. Mind you, these uh, arrows uh, means like, um, if, uh, like it, it kind of denotes a pathway that you have to take, which means like a, a previous academy may be a prerequisite to attending the other academy. So uh, you, before, you go more, before you attend the Tracker Config Academy, you need to have some idea about what you are doing with Tracker. That's why uh, we have mentioned that you have to attend the Tracker Use Academy. And then we have Tracker Level 2 Academies, which are Android Implementation, uh, Tracker Implementation Management, and Surveillance. So this is an overview about uh, DHIS2 Tracker Academies. Uh, we all know that most of these academies are currently uh, conducted online. But in future, uh, we are hoping to have on-site academies uh, as the COVID situation and the restrictions are kind of changing all across the globe. So we are hoping to uh, conduct probably in 2022. I think uh, Alice is here. Probably Alice knows it knows much better when we can have the uh, first on-site academy. But uh, probably in uh, 2022, we, we can have uh, on-site academies back. Alice, you want to mention something here? Um, hi, everyone. Thank you, Pamela. No, I will just say that we are working actively on trying to find out what, uh, when we will be having the on-site academies um, back. We will inform the community as usual um, through our DHS2 newsletter and announcements on the COP. Um, as soon as we have the dates, for the first academies to be hosted on site. That's it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Alice. So uh, I think I think all of you know who Alice is. Alice is the DHS2 Academy Coordinator from University of Oslo. So uh, she's super active in the DHS2 uh, community of practice. So you'll you'll definitely get updated about uh, uh, <clears throat> upcoming academies and uh, when we have planning to have the next academies uh, on which country, on which topic, uh, through the DHS to community of practice. 
Right, so next we will discuss about how you can follow the tracker development. Uh, we will discuss briefly about DHIS2 release cycle and the patches. So we have the DHIS2 core software, and this software is uh, releasing two new versions per year. Right? So we have at least two releases that happens, uh, mostly about six months apart uh, within one year. So uh, we have the release one, the, which happens in the first half of the year, and the release two, which happens in the second half of the year. And in addition, we also release patch releases. So patch releases are improvements to the uh, uh, releases, which are kind of two releases behind the latest. So for example, when we have the DHS2 2.36 as the latest, re latest release, we'll be also releasing patch releases to the DHS2 version 2.34 and version 2.35. So uh, it's always the patch releases are for the current release and two releases uh, before the latest. So you have to keep in mind if you want to uh, get cutting edge features as well as uh, you want to have the, all the security updates in your system, you should uh, take into consideration to stay at least two releases behind the latest version of DHIS2. So this is really important when you are having a tracker implementation because it's, it's not an easy task to upgrade a tracker instance uh, uh, to, to, to the latest version of DHIS2. So you will have to be mindful about when the DHIS2 is planning for a release so that uh, you can plan in-country training programs as well as uh, the, the ministry and the uh, program uh, workflows and their you know, like, uh, internal schedules so that uh, you can have a kind of a less busy time uh, in your system, in your, in your ministry workflows uh, to update your instance to the latest version. So the DHIS2 roadmap is highlighting what DHIS2 is planning to release and planning to incorporate in future. The DHIS2 roadmaps are publicly available with prioritization of uh, new features and fixes actively occurring. The roadmap is updated for each release uh, throughout the year to keep on top of uh, changing priorities. So to access the roadmap, uh, you can uh, navigate to this address. It's uh, dhis2.org slash roadmap. So you'll be able to know like what, what are the features that uh, DHIS2 is going to release in the upcoming versions by following the DHIS2 roadmap. And you can get updated about the new features of DHIS2 through various methods. We always have the community of practice and also social media. We have the DHIS2 Facebook page, YouTube, and the Twitter. So again, about like the resources, you must have gathered so much of resources during this academy uh, by actively engaging in the live sessions. Uh, you ask questions and you also uh, uh, participated in, uh, in activities as well as the final examination. But if you want additional resources, we have many of them. The documentation. The DHS2 documentation is a great resource that covers a range of topics from simple to complex. It might be a bit overwhelming for you when you start, but uh, I mean, even at this point of time, most of us, the senior implementers, we always refer the documentation when we are in doubt because that's one place where you can refer and uh, get, a, get a clear idea about what is there in DHS2 and how, it, uh, how the features work and what are the limitations. So we have four different categories of uh, user document of, of documentation, which covers different types of users. We have the user level, mainly targeting the end users, and we have an implementer, developer, and system administrators. So each of these different types of documentations covers different set of topics which are related to uh, the mentioned user categories. To, uh, to access the documentation, you can visit docs.dhis2.org. And the DHIS2 training resources are available in the Moodle platform that we are using. So uh, uh, this is the platform that uh, you all used when we were doing this academy, the training.dhis2.org. So you can uh, use the same user account, even in future, if you are uh, enrolling yourself to a DHIS2 academy and we are using the Moodle platform 
to distribute the resources uh, related to that academy. So you don't have to register a user account over and over again. And we also have COVID-19 material for local adaptation because uh, one uh, area that there is a lot of focus and a lot of uh, ongoing development in Tracker is the COVID-19. So we have a lot of COVID-19 related material bundled together in this address, dhs2.org, COVID training material. And if you want to uh, access the DHS2 demo site, so when do you need it? Like you might need it if you want to uh, demonstrate or show someone what DHS2 is capable of, or else if you want to try out a new feature or, 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 or uh, a quick functionality without uh, really messing too much with your uh, production instance. So for those purposes, you can use our play instance, which is play.dhs2.org or our demos.dhs2.org, which of course has, uh, when, you, when you visit there, it will show you uh, several categories or different directions where, where you can go to demonstrate uh, different, different topics. So we have some demo servers for WHO packages, and we, we have uh, specific ones for COVID-19, tracker demonstration, so on and so forth. So finally, the DHIS2 community of practice. So DHS2 is a special open source platform, not only because it's a great software, but mainly because it has a, a really awesome community. The DHIS2 and the open source software is driven and taken forward, and the direction of the platform is decided by the community or the network who are supporting the, uh, the, the platform. So the community is not just the University of Oslo and the core developers, it is all of us including you all and the end users. So please, if by any chance, it's, it's quite rare that you may not have a DHS2 community of practice uh, account, but we have in the Moodle uh, session today for the, for the closure, you will have uh, the resources, a PDF document where you can download and see the steps involved in uh, creating an account in DHS2 community of practice, which is so easy. You just have to uh, visit this DHS, uh, the community of dhs 2org and you can readily browse through topics, but what you can actually do is to create an account so that you will be engaging with the uh, uh, posting and sharing your own experiences, as well as it's a kind of a, a fun activity because uh, the more you engage with the community of practice, uh, the more you can advance um, by uh, or getting badges. And there are like a lot of uh, fun ways to advance forward in your journey in the community of practice. So please, if you if by any chance you don't have an account, please visit community dhs2 dot uh, community and create your account. You also have the resource on how to register account in the Moodle. Right. So finally, uh, please fill in the final feedback and join the community of practice because the feedback we take really serious because uh, uh, this is what will really help us. Uh, in understanding how what you want from the academy and how to plan the future academies, because this uh, DHS2 Tracker Use Academy, especially, uh, this is the first time we conducted uh, this academy, all of us. So uh, we had a lot to learn ourselves, and we have a lot to learn from the use experience you had participating in this academy. So please let us know uh, your experience and how we performed uh, the, the areas we can improve so that we can take them forward uh, in planning the next uh, DHS2 Tracker Use Academy, which will be coming shortly, probably in a few weeks. And uh, also about uh, your uh, final scores for the exam, it should be made available now if everyone has finished. So you can go through the exam results and the final grades and the certificate will only be made available once everyone has submitted their uh, daily assignments, which are due by November 5th. So probably towards uh, November 7th or 8th, we will be making available your certificates and your final grades, and you will be announced on this in our Slack channel. So don't lose the Slack account. Uh, so there we will be announcing um, uh, all this information. And any final uh, questions or comments you have, and before that, of course, uh, uh, while, while uh, yeah, please type in your questions. And in the meantime, um, we have two more things to do. 
One is, uh, of course, uh, getting the group photo. So please uh, get your cameras on and be ready. Uh, uh, we will take it shortly. And uh, Alice, uh, any final comments from your side? Um, I think you mentioned everything, Pamad. Um, I just want to thank all the participants for attending uh, this Tracker Youth Academy um, uh, that was hosted this week. And I, I hope you found it uh, very useful and fruitful. And as Pamad said, we're really looking forward to read your feedback. So do not hesitate to fill in the feedback form. And once again, Congratulations for attending this academy. I hope you had a, a good time. <laughs> That's it. Thank you so much. And thank you to Pamod and all the team behind this academy. I know you'll put so much effort um, to make sure you, we meet our participants' needs. So thank you to everyone. Thank you so much, Alice, for attending the closing session. Uh, Saurabh? If you are, yeah, I think you are muted. Uh, if you have any final remarks. Right, so uh, I think till Saurabh uh, yeah, gets his audio sorted. So let's try to take the, um, the group photo. So please everyone uh, turn on your cameras so that let me stop sharing. Let's give it a try. I will give uh, probably one minute for everyone to you know, prepare and uh, turn on your cameras. A few more seconds uh, for everyone. Probably 10 more seconds. I'm seeing only yeah, half of the group. Just a few more seconds till I... I'm having some issues, Alice. So would you be able to take it? Uh... Um, I'm trying, but for some reasons, uh, I have only one participant. Uh... I was trying to do the same, but I'm not sure why. Oh yeah, now it's no, okay. better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right. uh, let me try to take it as well. Just a minute. It's always. Uh, okay. I, mean, I think again, yeah, uh, let me, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, someone, someone was sharing the screen. That's okay, let's try again. Yeah, I think this is good now. Can I ask everybody to just say hi to your camera with a bright smile, please? <laughs> you can wave, you know. <laughs> Great, perfect. I think I have some good... Yeah. I uh, think yeah, I also got. Uh, yeah. Cool. Two. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks. Right. So, uh, Saurabh, are you back? I think uh, he's having some issues. Okay. No worries. 
Fine. So um, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, I hope you must be having access to the uh, to your scores, final scores of the exam. But mind you, like the, the final score for the entire academy is not just going to be the final exam. Uh, so it will be um, uh, combined with the, uh, uh, the marks that you are getting for the continuous assessments, the assignments that you are having on daily basis, and then you, your final grade will be calculated. So, uh, I mean, like, I know, like, uh, it must have been a bit difficult because usually this is our experience when it comes to uh, the tracker academies generally. Like uh, most of the participants find it a bit difficult. It has to be because tracker is always complicated compared to other academies like uh, the analytic tools where most of the participants are familiar. So this is just a motivation for you to understand the tracker better. Uh, but like um, it is uh, not at all to inhibit anyone or to make, make you scared about like uh, DHSU tracker is so difficult. No, it's not like that. Uh, if you understand the basics, right, it will really help you to uh, uh, to practice DHIS2 and to implement it better, as well as to teach someone uh, that is our final objective. Right. So, uh, any final comments from uh, any participants or queries? If not, I think we have come to an end. Um, so, we can close the academy. I'm not seeing any questions. Seen some questions about certificates and marks. Don't worry, all will be. I mean, like you, you will have your certificates uh, after the uh, uh, deadline for submission of the assignments, which is November fifth. So once everyone has uh, submitted assignments, you will have your certificates, and we will announce that in the Slack channel. Right. So uh, if there are no more comments, uh, first I must thank all of you for attending this academy. It has been a really nice experience. Uh, with you guys in the last five days. Uh, you have been really responsive uh, in the academy. We have been asking questions sometime and uh, like uh, you are always replying in the chat as well as uh, unmuting and connecting us uh, through audio. Uh, so it has been a pleasure. And also my thanks to the uh, HISP uh, India, HISP Vietnam and HISP Sri Lanka team, uh, as well as his Bangladesh and uh, uh, his uh, Indonesia team, so the all the his nodes in the Asia region for their contributions, as well as the country representation uh, for the uh, use case webinar that we had. So uh, it has been a collaborative effort as usual. It's not just uh, uh, University of Oslo with his group presenting. So it's uh, always country representation is uh, highly uh, accepted and uh, we, we, we really appreciate uh, the countries who are supporting implementation of the DHS2 software. So it has been real pressure. And finally, I must thank my uh, co-facilitator, Saurabh, as well as all other facilitators who were supporting us uh, throughout this uh, five days. So thank you so much. Uh, have a great weekend. I know like it has been a quite a hectic uh, week with this academy. So take some rest, have a great weekend and hoping to see you all probably in the next academy or somewhere else. So have a great weekend. Bye-bye.